Didn't even have to ask for it for me to get it. When you see my ass in this, I try to cut it. <laughs> everyone welcome to another vlog Woo! so before we start I just want to say like an overwhelming uh, very deep like thank you from the bottom of my heart like the comments that you all left at my last video where I was like upset like really warmed my heart like I was, I thought that vlog was like shit and boring and you all were like, no, believe in yourself, like you're amazing, I love your vlogs and it made me so happy, so thank you so much, I just want to, I'm just really grateful, so thank you. Today's another vlog and I did ask a poll on Instagram because I have so many vlog ideas which one I should do and an overwhelming amount of you picked to read Bookstagrammer's uh, 21 favorites. Now this was a bit of a misleading title because really I was only planning to read one Bookstagrammer slash book blogger's favorite books. So I'm sorry if you thought there were going to be many in this video, we're just going to focus on one Bookstagrammer. Why? I don't know. I think I'm really impressed with uh, this book's grammar. Her name is Moles by Moonlight. Go and follow her. Uh, go and like her photos and comments and show her some uh, love and appreciation and check out like I think why I like her so much is because she has like such an amazing selection of books and I feel like we have pretty much the exact same taste. I think I would love everything that she rates highly and I think I would love to read the type of books that she does but I just, um, I don't know, I just don't know how to pick them like she does. I think she's incredible, she also has a book blog uh, where she like writes about the books and stuff so I will link both of those down below but we're just going to focus on Molly in this video. So we're going to be reading I think four books and I'm going to try to read them all in one week because the week after that I have to start reading the book club book for the climate fiction book club I only have one book so far I will show you all of her I think like maybe top 20 books I don't remember but here are all of them there's loads on this on this list that I would love to read yes the only one that I have read is Dear Santuram but I gave that five stars then there's a ton of books that I'm like interested in um, like, I'll definitely read Comfort Me with Apples at some point. I was already trying to order Slug. And a lot of them seem, like, interesting. And there's a few, like, nonfiction. Perhaps I'll pick up, like, a nonfiction on audiobook or something. But the four that I have picked is, like, you can see this one, Sarah Land. Um, I did talk about this one, hauling this one in my last vlog. It's a short story collection about people called Sarah. And it's actually fairly short. So I'm going to try to read all of this today. Yeah, I don't think we're going to manage, like, maybe the last two stories or something. But we're going to try. It's blurred by Michelle T. And Andrea Lawler. And Jean Kyung Fraser. So I'm really excited for this. The other books that I've picked, I think they were going to come in the mail tomorrow. Uh, the first one is The Discomfort of Evening. This is a book translated from Dutch, I believe. It's about, like, mm, farming in the Netherlands. I've been interested in this for a really long time, so this is also kind of an excuse to, like, finally read this book. Then I'm going to pick up Slug and Other Stories, which is just a short story collection. I think this cover is just, like, amazing. I love it so much. Um, and then I'm also going to pick up... Uh, Someone's calling. Hi, this is Wilma. Okay. <laughs> Wrong number. And the last one is, oh my god, how am I going to say this? Is it Ch Ch Chouette? Ch Chouette? Something? I don't know. But this one I believe is about a couple who is expecting a child and the mother believes that it's going to be an owl and then the child comes out disfigured and then the dad like doesn't like the child but the mother like worships her endlessly so that one has a theme of motherhood motherhood i really like i like books about uh motherhood for some reason no for for no for no like particular thing now i'm gonna go and meet a friend for some studying and i will read this book with them
I'm home again. It's nice to sit to like sit at a cafe and like study and stuff with a friend. Um, Sarah Land, I've read the first two stories. I like them both quite a bit. Um, how do I explain them? They're sort of written, I think, in a way that like Gen Z would kind of call iconic. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good explanation at all. It's kind of written in the same vibe of no one is talking about this, where it's actually pretty casual, but at the same time, it's like really intense. And the stories always turn like quite dark at the end. There's a lot of funny moments. At times, it's almost like a little bit satirical on the edge of that. Um, I love all the lesbianism so far, to use a word in this book. So I would give the first story, Sarah Land, like uh, 4.5 stars. And then the one I just read, Naked Future, 5 stars. I really like them. And I'm really excited to read uh, the rest of them. But I'm also I'm pretty tired, so that's- I've gotten through this small bit. There's a new Euphoria episode out, and if you don't already know, I'm obsessed with Euphoria. Um, not so much now as I was, and now here's a second season. I love Euphoria a lot. Um, Rue reminds me so deeply of myself, um, at that same age. Like, it's almost, like, hard to watch. I've also struggled with like addiction and stuff in my life and just seeing yeah this show I think it's a really good show I know like a lot of people like, think it's like romanticizing a lot and I get that I get that I still like it though <laughs> so me and my mom are gonna watch some more of that it is sunny today again can you believe it can you believe it um I recently woke, woke up and I'm just gonna go and um, like eat at a cafe for breakfast today. Yeah. Yes! And then we're gonna, I'm gonna read Sarah Land. I only read, I think, actually the two stories I told you about yesterday. So I have a lot of catching up to do. Let's do it. Buns, except Ruby, who's a scared little, I was gonna say piece of shit, but I don't know why I would call her that. She is, she is a little piece of shit, actually. Um, I am really enjoying Sarah Land, like, a lot. I love how each story has something to do with, uh, the name Sarah, like, the importance of a name. I like how they are so gay, like, I did not know this book was queer, but it just, like, each story gets, like, progressively more queer. I love kind of, like, the political angle the book takes. I like that uh, each story feels, like, incomplete, but more on an emotional level than um, a story level. I like the characters. I like how it's written. I am, like, really vibing with all the stories, and they're different, but they all have, like, a similar energy. I really like them a lot. Uh, they definitely all go between like four stars and five stars, but I just managed to pick up the package. I still have a couple of stories left in Sarah Land that I need to start my second book if I'm gonna do this uh, <laughs> uh, Kayla style and just try to uh, read four books. Actually five. I'm listening to the audiobook Crippled. I don't remember the author. It is really good so far. It's kind of shifting my perspective a little bit on uh, like how certain terms are used like for example when we say someone's vulnerable it usually actually means like in a political sense because of the laws that are in place that make people vulnerable and stuff like that that was just one example but there are so many great things in that book that i'm really loving so let me see here's the discomfort of evening um so this is 280 pages I don't know how thick these are. I'm hoping they're not too thick. Okay. They're thicker than I thought, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. But we can do it, right? Oh my god, I love this cover. Look at how stunning that is. It's like, this is one book. And we have this one, this one. Very nice. This one is 240 pages. So weird how that works. Like, this one is 40 pages longer than this one, but this one is shorter. Like, it looks smaller. No, this one's 250. It's like, <laughs> they all got so 
excited when I sat down because they're like, is there food here? And then they realize I don't have food and they're like, well, fuck this. <laughs> I won't stick around. There's no food. These are 15 short stories. Probably start this tomorrow reading like three stories a day or something. Uh, this is also blurred by Andrea Lawler. You're really reading a lot of these books, Andrea. I think I'm going to start this one today because I think it is the book that I know the least about and I'm the least interested in in general. Um, so I'm going to try to get a head start on this one. And that's the little unboxing. I got to pick up some shelves. And there's this TikTok. I'll pause the video to like let you see the TikTok. It's so funny. It's this guy or person on a bike. They're like, do you need help with that? Because they're carrying like a couch on the bike. They're like, no, it's okay. Are you sure? And it's like, no. I'm like, I've been doing this for six years. Hey, you need help? No. You got it? No. Are you sure? <laughs> and I actually found that TikTok through like a page that was like Capricorn TikToks or whatever. And I've like never felt more seen in my entire life. Um, it's just so me. I'm always carrying furniture that I just actually can't carry and it takes me such a long time and I struggle and people always ask like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. I got the shelf. I'm really happy with it because it kind of fits uh, these ones, which I got completely new and I didn't want to get new ones. These ones are metal and I didn't want to get new ones. So I've been scouring like Facebook marketplace often to try to find some that could like go together with these ones, but were secondhand. And I finally found this one. It was so fun. Like the people who I picked it up with, they were like a Polish family and their home was such a mess and they were so unapologetic, unapologetic about it because sometimes like I feel like my uh, apartment is a mess, which it is but then I'll be like, oh, don't want to invite people home I feel really awkward about it and it's just like so nice to see people um, embracing the mess and just like not seeing that as a important thing to mention when you meet someone but I don't think you can tell from camera but the shelves are the wrong way and oh, it's bothering me so much because these are like sharp and on the other side they're round and they kind of go in a little bit on this side but then they stick out on the other side and I don't think it's worth it to like take everything apart just to make the shells go the right way um, but it's making me go a little crazy I don't know where to put this yet it's not gonna be here because this is actually the door to the bunny space but kind of ideally, I would like there to be bookshelves on both sides of this little wall thing. The only problem is that uh, some of the bunnies that are on this side, they like to bite books and stuff, which means that there can't be any books on the bottom shelves. So I'm going to think about like how to do that. But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty tired. So I should probably get to reading. I'm really fangirling over Sarah Lind. The one story I'm reading now is called Gemstones and you know what the gemstones is referring to? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a second to guess. The gemstones are referring to the gems in Steven Universe. Yeah. Yeah, I am fangirling a little bit. Okay. Sometimes the gemstones would fuse, so that ruby and sapphire became a whole new gemstone, many times the size of either ruby or sapphire alone. The new gemstone possessed entirely new superpowers like hyperspeed or future seeing third eye. I'm gonna start part three now. I have 70 more, 17 more pages to read in this today. I've come like this far. Uh, I think I mentioned it. It's about uh, a woman who... <laughs> Ruby just did the cutest yawns. But a woman who has had sex with an owl mother and they're creating this owl baby that she uh, grows in her belly and her husband basically thinks that she's kind of a little crazy and that she's imagining these things and they're like kind of hallucinations or something or I don't know. But it's very uncomfortable in the beginning like everyone basically just gaslights her and it's very uncomfortable and unpleasant to read about like how no one believes these things are true 
ugh, and it's like, I think it's so well written because there's so many things in the world that we just like don't validate because they don't fit into our beliefs for various reasons. Like, they'd have to fit into our beliefs, otherwise we can't validate someone else's experience. I think that's weird. We should just take experience as fact for people. Um, and I think that book, this book illustrates that very well. Like, how can you possibly know know that she's not giving birth to an owl and hasn't had sex with a owl goddess, you know? If you haven't experienced it, how could you know? You don't. <laughs> Why could this not be real? I live in a world where this could be real. And yeah, there's definitely going to be probably some themes of like disfigurement and stuff too. The language is like a little bit more gendered uh, than I like, but it's fine. I don't know what I expected from a book that has themes of motherhood, but it's pretty good. I still have quite a few short stories in Sarah land to read, but I think I'll just upload you, update you on those tomorrow and my ratings and stuff because I'm pretty tired. So see you tomorrow. This is not a perfect outfit, but I still want to show you because I look nerdy and cute. This is an overalls jumper that I made. Uh, it has like loads of teddy bears on it if you can't distinguish the pattern. I think it's really cute. I also made this one actually. Oh my god, is this an outfit I all, all made myself? Yeah, it is. This I made my first year at textile design um, school. And this is the look. Usually this part would really bother me, you know? Because the shirt is bigger than the under part. But the shop is pretty cold, so I'll probably just wear a jumper the entire time and you can't see this beautiful puff, puff sleeves. So it's a little more pedestrian like this. It's pretty cold in the store. Oh yeah, did I say that? I'm looking at art books today. I forgot to say. <laughs> Why do I... I always look so tired. I have such a tired face. I am back home and very tired. There we go, lighting. Thank you. I forgot that... What did I forget? I'm tired. Oh yeah, um, my friend came by to visit me at ARC, which was not something I expected, but it was very nice, which means I didn't get any reading done. But every time I say my friend, I'm talking about the same person, by the way. Yeah. When I got home, I got some mail. Um, this is some art. Very cute. Happy meal. This is some art that I ordered because there's this uh, Instagram artist that I think does like pretty cute, cool art. So I ordered like a print, a bookmark, I believe, uh, from this person. Ordering stuff from like um, artists through Instagram or Etsy, whatever. It's such a joy. Like look at this cute package. This is, thank you, so adorable. Oh my god, amazing. Uh, I think their name is Kindy, or at least Kindy Illustrations. Um, this is their business card, I believe. Follow them on Instagram, support them, I think they're cute. Look how cute this art is. Look how adorable. I like it so much. Yay! That's adorable! Oh my god. This is the bookmark. This is the bookmark I got. Um, you can order it with or without the tassels. I order it with that tassel. It's a little person holding a basket of carrots. Fun fact, I really hate carrots. It's one of the few things that I really don't like. As well as parsley or coriander. But I still think this illustration is really cute. And here's the print. This is the prints. I'm going to put it up in a frame that I got. Hello, so my mom is uh, at her school thing today. Um, did I tell you she was visiting? <laughs> I forgot she's visiting because she has school here in Denmark. And we had breakfast out and about and I'm soon going to 
like a ballroom uh, hangout where we basically just like watch ballroom videos and hang out. <laughs> it's a good time. But also there's some like yoga before that in like the same building. So I'm going to go to that because it's free and stuff, which is just like amazing. Um, I am really far into Schuette. Schuette. When I say Schuette like that, it sounds like 21 in Swedish. Schuette. It's the same thing. This is making me really, really uncomfortable, but I know it's on purpose. So, yeah, I just don't like books that make me feel uncomfortable. Even though I know it's, like, well done. Sometimes I'm like, mmm. Um, the gaslighting, the, the way a lot of stuff is done in this, like, with motherhood and parenting. I hate her husband. I hate him! Ugh! Oh. He like, he's, oh, he's so horrible to her and the baby, um, but it's a good book and it's really easy to read, but it's also really unique and I guess I like it. I also only read two stories in Slug and this one's already quite similar to Sarah Land. There's also a story about two characters called Tegan and Sarah, which is the same in, um, Sarah Land. And in this one they also wear, uh tail butt plugs, which is also something that happens in Sarah Land, <laughs> which I'm like, that is so specific, right? Or is wearing tail butt plugs a normal thing? And I just don't know. Maybe I'm missing out. I also went quickly into a secondhand store and found this like, oh my god, it's giving me so much gender euphoria, but not maybe gender euphoria, but like euphoria because it's like feels good on my body. I don't know. But also, the last story I read in this one, I wasn't a huge fan of it. And the next story is 36 pages. And I still need to finish this today. And then I'm going to go to ballroom practice. I'm going to go come home late tonight. <sighs> so I don't know uh, what I'm going to do. But maybe I didn't tell you. Sarah Land was definitely five stars. I liked it a lot. And I think also I liked it a lot because I understood a lot of the stories. And I do feel like short stories are um, often less comprehensible than regular stories and I also find it difficult to like get into short stories like it takes like a lot of emotional and mental effort for me to start a new story like every 20 pages because I have to like mentally get ready to perceive and understand like a new concept and new characters and so reading a short story collection is actually quite like energy draining for my brain mm. So I think, like, reading a lot of, like, marathoning short stories or, like, reading two th short stories in a week, like I'm doing this week, it's a bit too much for me. But now I gotta go to the yoga, to the ballroom. It's a coping mechanism. You have to carry your past with you. If a memory... This is my outfit for the day. Um, I can't wait for, like, summer when it's hot. S those three days in Copenhagen where you can actually wear stuff like this outside. Oh my god, this is like my favorite outfit. This is like what I wear to dance class too. I'm watching um, Past Storytime's recent vlog and Sean tried to read Chouette, uh, also on Molly's recommendation, and she DNF'd it. I think she would like it though, but I feel like Sean maybe has mentioned she doesn't like themes like my motherhood and stuff, uh, which I get because that's like the whole book. But I feel like it's the type of book she would like if she got into it. But yes, I finished Chouette yesterday. I haven't. Wait, should I get it? So, Chouette. I'm gonna put my little hearts on it. So, the ending was kind of, I have to say, predictable. Like, that is kind of how I thought the ending was go would go. I don't know if I predicted that exact, like, exact uh, way that it was gonna end, but I, I predicted the essence of how the characters were gonna end up, sort of. I think it was the most natural way for the book. There, there could have been worse ways. <laughs> it could have ended like a real dystopian sort of ending and I would have kind of hated the book. I wanna... This is a horror. Like, you, you can't argue with me that it's not a horror, but I would say this is definitely a horror. I was terrified by the end. Like, it is really terrifying. This is a scary book. I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> but more like of the normal scared because obviously she has an owl baby, but if you think about it in terms of like having a child that's different or uh, like disabled or something like that, 
then this becomes very real and very terrifying very quickly. Yeah. Also, it's a little bit gay, which is cool. So, I don't know, I was really affected by this book. So, a part of me wants to give it, like, five stars, but then I didn't enjoy it as much. Like, I'm the type of reader, there's quite a few books, like, um, like, An Ocean of Minutes, and this one, and even Bewilderment, where I don't necessarily hate the book, but I don't like the feelings it brings out. Like, I just don't like books that make me feel really, really uncomfortable, or, like, sad, or hopeless, or, like, icky. And so I rate the book really low, even though it's, like, by no means actually a bad book. And I'm going to try not to do that, that, that with this one, because it's definitely not a bad book. Pro bad book. I'd probably give it four stars. running. I was looking for slug, the book, and then I just started feeding like the bunnies some breakfast and I completely forgot I was the Um, I haven't read anything more in this. I'm also not really into it for some reason. It seems like a lot of work to start a new story all the time. And then it happened again. I got completely distracted and forgot the camera was running. I just ended up looking at my phone and... <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me, but yeah, then I watched past story time, and then at this point I realized the camera was still running. I just finished the story that's called Kill Margaret and it's really nicely written like it's a game and she has like three lives and then if she doesn't manage to kill Margaret and like she dies then that scene starts over again and then she gets a second try at killing Margaret which is like her bully or Caddy's our main character's bully and it's written in like such a fun way but it's so dark oh my god McDonald's Archies. <laughs> they were originally called the Golden Archies. <laughs> <laughs> Would you take a look at them, McDonald's Archies? <laughs> it's the next day, and I woke up way too late, so it's pretty far into the day already. It's quarter past two, and I have made porridge. I really felt like making some Christmas porridge. <coughs> I just swallowed my own spit. Ew. Okay. So yesterday I got uh, like a hundred pages into this book, The Discomfort of Evening by Merieke Lukas Reschnevel. <laughs> so this is about this 10 year old girl, I believe, who lives in a family with three other siblings. Um, at a farm with her parents right at the beginning of the book and her family is like very religious Christian and right at the beginning of the book one of her oldest brother I believe dies and the rest of the book is basically just her internal reflection like she's thinking about death a lot and the book focuses on death and also like animal cruelty quite a bit and just like her experience with growing up on this farm and this like religious family and like her relationship to religion but it's quite dark it's really nicely written in my opinion uh but i don't know if it's exactly like my taste in reading but i am like really enjoying it my best friend is like my best oldest friend is from uh the netherlands and she's also grown up with three siblings and two parents in Utrecht, which is like the city that the author is from. What else was I gonna say? And my friend's family is also really religious. So it's like kind of funny. I wonder if she would like this book. I don't think so. But like this life is quite like similar to the upbringing of like uh, my best oldest friend. But I do think this is autofiction, which is a new world wor word that I've learned. I'm really excited about it because the uh, the birthday of the author is 20th of April, um, 
which is also the character's author uh, birthday, which is also my mom's birthday, and also Hitler's birthday, which is something they talk about in this. Um, then I've read a lot in Slug, actually. I've come this far. I thought this was going to be one of those, like, uh, tougher short story collections, but I'm really enjoying it. They're all really different, different, which makes this a little bit... Like, I need to shift my mind a little bit while, when I start each story, because in Sarah Land, they all have, like, a very similar theme and vibe, so it's easier to jump from one story to the other, because they all make sense together. This one is a little bit, like, every story is quite different, and the last one I read... Uh, I really liked. I really enjoyed it a lot, actually. What was that? Uh, Wild Animals. I really liked that one. I also liked the first one. I liked the, like, the sexual ones, because they get so weird. Um, I also really liked Twins, Pleasantville, and then the, the one that's called Twins is like a choose-your-own-adventure, which is a concept that I fi find like so fun to read about. Um, how you like read certain sections that it's like if you make this choice jump to this page or if you make this choice jump to that page And so like there's so many versions of that story, which I think is really fun to read The only problem is that it's such so annoying because I have to read every single option <laughs> And every single story which obviously means that you read the whole short story, you know And some of them do overlap. So obviously I don't like reread certain parts but I feel like I do remember all the paths you can take so that it doesn't become confusing if I go back just one step and take a different path. I think the stories are so fun and I liked it a lot and I also liked the concept of it. It had like an alien invasion sort of uh, concept but with twins. Uh, the only thing I will say that the, is that this one in particular, you know those like uh, teen magazines typically marketed towards like young teenage girls? The one in Sweden was called Julia, which is a magazine that I collected for a really long time where it would be like, which uh, Disney character are you or like which celebrity boyfriend fits you best or whatever, you know, and you'd have to take this quiz and then like you'd do the points and then you'd like see which one was yours. What I want is a choose your own adventure quiz where First, you do a choose your own adventure, kind of like in this one, and at the end, it like analyzes what type of person you are depending on like what path you chose. I know, like doesn't that just sound so good? Should I do that? Oh my god, no. No, don't do it, Luma. Like a part of you just wants, wanted to like m make that for this short story. I feel like that would be so fun because then you have, because every choice like says something about you, right? I feel like that'd be really, really fun. Or like, guess your zodiac according to what cho choices you make. Or something like that, you know what I'm talking about. So I am really enjoying my reading, but I did something fun too, is that I actually asked, so Molly just uploaded like, like look what, how interesting books she reads. Like look at all those interesting books. Like I wanna read all of these. Like it's, they're so interesting and I haven't heard of like most of them. Anyways, I asked her like what books she would recommend out of these ones. I think there's like 20 of her top of 2021 and I asked her which ones she would recommend for me and she chose four, I didn't say many and they were Slug and Other Stories, Tell Me I'm Worthless, Girls Against God, as well as Chouette. So I think it's a pretty cool coincidence that I've chosen five books and she chose four and even though there's 20 books to choose from, she picked two of the books that I actually picked for this video. I think that's pretty awesome. But now I also really want to read the other two books and I really have to constrain myself not to like extend this vlog. Because they both sound really good. Yeah. Her parents do their best to help, but both are in their late 60s and she is now constantly tired. Okay, this last short story that I just read is called Trauma Rama, um, but it's supposed to be like a take on was it called like Drama Rama or something that was in like the magazines of Seventeen. It's the same with the Julia magazine that I usually had. Like people would send in embarrassing stories that they would have, and it would be like such a funny experience. Those magazines also had like 
I remember in one of them, in the Norwegian one that was like a bit more for teens, you could send like ask questions about like sex and stuff, and there would be like a professional sexologist or like who would answer your questions. And secretly, that was like my favorite section. I was a, I was very curious about sex when I was like young, like a teen, young. <laughs> And then they also had a section of like, do you want to be my pen pal type of thing? Where you'd write a little bit about yourself, like you could send it in, and then ask for a pen pal for whatever reason. That was also a lot of fun. But anyways, and then like, the stories in this one, the one with Traumarama, like the short story, just like gets progressively worse. Like the stories become like more and more horrible and serious. And so like, you feel bad for laughing at the first ones. But I guess it's supposed to be like commentary on like how those stories that were embarrassing were just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna read the rest tomorrow. Yummy Chinese food. Whoa. It's gonna be a feast. Yum, yum, yum. But they've never done a scene like in the workroom, which I feel like is like the queen's. It's the next day, and it's gonna be the last day of the reading vlog. So the small part in this and the small part in this is what I have left to read today. My mom is actually gonna go home today, but she's staying another day because her, her train was canceled because there's a storm going through Copenhagen. I think a lot of different places called Malik. Maybe it's in your country too. It was blowing like, it was very windy yesterday. Very windy. It's, it's scary to go outside because maybe you'll be pushed over by the wind type of stuff. So she's staying for another day, which is nice for me, but I'm also going to ballroom practice tonight. So... I haven't like talked a lot about ballroom, but ballroom is obviously referring not to like this type of ballroom, but like like Poe's ballroom, Paris is burning, you know what I'm talking about. So tonight, like every last Sunday of the month, they decided to do like a trans and non-binary exclusionary session, which I am so excited for. Like ballroom is so cool, you guys. It re like. It really is so cool and there's ballroom commu communities in what I believe is like pretty much every country and it's a great place to start if you're looking for, if you're a creative and you're looking for like a queer community, ballroom is that for you, like yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, I'm really excited to go tonight and it was actually one of a person that I met from ballroom who like helped me get like testosterone whatever you know we had this whole like a year ago I was going through this whole thing with like queer community and like feeling lonely and trying to look for but now we're here and now I'm telling you just look for it it's out there so we're gonna read this today I was gonna like sew and do stuff I'm filming another video simultaneous sim simultaneously as this one trying to tell you about like what I'm making for drag stuff March is going to be absolutely crazy when it comes to drag things and I really need to get on that. I have this mind where it's like it's hard for me to read and do drag at the same time and I mean I don't mean like actually at the same time I mean like I feel like normally it would be okay to like do one like sew and do drag stuff during the day and then in the evening you can read a bit or stuff like that but I can't focus on like two things at the same time like I just have to either read all the time or do drag all the time and what I'm doing now is I'm trying to like slowly ease into it and training my mind to do both at the same time. Because I don't like it when it's so intense with drag and so intense with reading. Like I would like to have some balance that uh, essentially works out better for me than what I've been doing before. So this week was kind of intense with reading, but I have been sewing quite a bit too, just not as usually as I lot not as much as I usually do. So I'm really trying to make this transition easy and try to read while I also like do drag. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. Also, this is my mug today. It's my meme mug, meme mug, my original meme mug. Do you guys remember when this was what memes look like? Yeah, I find it, found it at second hand and I thought it was amazing. Are you doing good, Charm? Look at that mouth. Look at that cute little mouth. You doing good, baby?
I'm painting my nails and watching Mean Girls. Because I had a very specific urge to watch Mean Girls, which I don't have a lot. Okay, I'll pause it. Wait, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, there's a quiz where you can basically like look who... Mm, you take like a personality quiz and there there's like all the characters, I guess like pretty much ever uh, that people have answered questions for. So there's like a huge database of characters with different t character traits. And the quiz is like, which character are you? I'll link it down below if I remember which one it is. Um, and it's like any character in any show ever, yeah. You get, you get the gist. Uh, but I got the character I was most like was Damien from Mean Girls. And I wear that with pride. So that is the end of the vlog. I have read all these books and I'll talk about this one. I finished this one really late yesterday. It was pretty sad, pretty depressing. The World War II and uh, like imagery and discussions of like Hitler and Jews and stuff were quite prevalent in this one. And I don't know if I really understood the purpose of it in like the context of the book. It was just really sad and really depressing. And I think th what the author did really well was like capturing the um, the feeling and the thoughts and the essence of being like 10 to 12 years old. I feel like that was done so well. There's so many things where we're like, yeah, like I did think like that when I was that age and I completely forgotten about that. So I felt like it was, it's definitely an adult book. So like don't read this to your children. But that feeling of being that age I think was well captured but it's just kind of a really sad book and I think the parts that I enjoyed the least about this was like the physical and intimate grotesqueness of things that were quite sexual in a way but because they were so young it made me feel like a bit uncomfortable and not that I'm saying it was like unrealistic for these like very young teens to like experience this or like old children but it was just like made me uncomfortable that's it I'm really glad I read it though because I've been wanting to read this for a really really long time and this is the main character she wears this coat non-stop in the whole book like she basically doesn't poop ever and honestly all I wanted for her was to take a shit at the end <laughs> and that didn't even happen did I talk about Slug? I really liked Slug. It, the thing is, like, these two start off really similarly and then they become two completely different short story collections. And in many ways, I think I actually enjoyed this one more, but I actually would recommend this one more. And, like, if I didn't know anything about these books, I'd rather have read this one than have read this one, even though technically I'm giving this a higher rating, which is weird. But uh, my ranking of these would be like this, and then the audiobook that I listened to, Crippled, I feel like that's what it was called, is in between here after Chouette, and then The Discomfort of Evening. I'm giving this like 3.25 stars, it wasn't bad. 4 stars, 5 stars, 4.5 stars, 5 stars maybe, both of these. Oh wait, like this. 4.75 stars, 5 stars. I also really liked Crippled, I thought it was like a great audiobook if you want to learn about disability rights, especially the economics and the political rules and regulations that are in place that uh, make, I guess, like crippled people crippled in, the f crippled in the first place. It goes into like statistics a lot and talks to a lot of people who have first-hand experience with like funding and how that works and it talks a lot about like poverty and how uh, big of an issue poverty is within uh, the disability community and also the history of how like the UK and England kind of came to be this sort of thing and how it's actually going backwards and stuff like that. I wish there was more discussion of like black indigenous people of color and how that plays into like that vulnerability and marginalization as well as immigrants and that kind of thing. Like I think anyone reading the book would assume that obviously that would just make the whole situation worse and I don't know if it's because there's not enough statistics on that specific, specific uh, intersection or if it's just assumed that we know that of course people who are also immigrants or black and disabled um, have it harder than just disabled but like I don't know I wish there was a bit more discussion on that. I did really like 
the chapters on disabled women as well as the children chapter but it is a really hard book to read like it's really difficult because I mean it's real but when you lay it out all like that and it's quite intense like uh, it made me feel like a lot of feelings and not necessarily like hopeful feelings and at the end I wish the author would have brought more more discussions on like how to solve this even though there was a little bit of that so that goes here I also want to let you all know that all of these books have pretty heavy content warnings and trigger warnings that you should probably look up like they were all very graphic and intense and yeah difficult to read and I think Molly likes those type of books is what I've discovered in this video but yeah please do look up all of that stuff because they're yeah it's a lot in all of these books but I did really really enjoy this one I highly recommend checking out Molly or Malls by Moonlight uh, on Instagram as well as her blog she has like so many great like I kind of want to just like read everything that she reads and just like abandon my whole personality when it comes to reading <laughs> I will definitely read Tell Me I'm Worthless. I've already ordered it. And I will also read the Jenny Vall book, but I also realized that she is Norwegian, so there's no reason for me to read it in English when I can just read it in the original language. Will it ever happen though? We'll see. I hope so. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope I gave some of your favorites justice, Mills. I really enjoyed this vlog and I really want to read more books like these. Like this is the type of reader I aspire to be. You're the type of reader I aspire to be. Really inspired with all that. They're so queer. Um, they're so weird. And also I want to mention with Slug that it's like, it's so queer, but it also it's like very fluid when it comes to like species and animals and humans and like, People are always like shifting in between like different states and it's like really cool and I want to read more stuff like that. And I wish you all an amazing, beautiful, incredible day and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye!